The empirical rule is only useful for evaluating specific values such as mean and standard deviation. Once the data set is standardized, however, any data value can be evaluated. Data are standardized by converting them to z-values, also known as z-scores, and you'll probably hear me say z-scores more than z-value. The z-value or the z-score represents the number of standard deviations that given data value is from the mean. Therefore, z-scores can be used to determine the position of any data value within a set of data. So what this is saying is that we know the exact percentages for one standard deviation away, two standard deviations away, and so on. But what if the data is not exactly one or two standard deviations away from the mean? You can use a z-score to compute exactly how many standard deviations away from the mean than any piece of data is if we know the mean and the standard deviation. And we can do so by the formula z equals x minus mu over sigma, where mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. So in example three, find z if x equals 18, the mean, that's mu, the mean is 22, and sigma is the standard deviation of 3.1. So we plug this into the formula, z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So the uh, value we're dealing with is 18 minus the mean of 22 over a standard deviation of 3.1, and 18 minus 22 is negative 4, and negative 4 divided by 3.1 is approximately equal to 1.29, negative 1.29. So that means that we're dealing with 1.29 standard deviations below the mean, below the mean because it is negative. Then it says to indicate the position of x in the distribution. So if I draw my bell curve, so I'll draw my best bell curve here, we know that the middle of the bell curve, about right here, that's the mean and then we're going below, so that would be one standard deviation away. So this should be about right in this area right there. That would be a z-score of about negative 1.29. So what I've got right here, that red line that's going up and down, that would be indicate the position of a z-score of negative 1.29 in the standard bell curve. Example three is working the other way. It is find x if mu is 39, sigma is 8.2, and the z-score is 0.73, and indicate the position of x in the distribution. So again, the formula is z-score equals the data point minus mu, the mean, divided by the standard deviation. So we actually know what z is this time. We know it is 0.73. What we're actually trying to find is the data. The data is x minus mu, which is 39. That's this right there. Over the standard deviation sigma of 8.2. And then we're going to solve this equation for x. We will start out by eliminating the equation of fractions by multiplying both sides times 8.2. So when I multiply both sides by 8.2, the 8.2s cancel on that side. And I get 8.2 times... 0.73, and that is approximately equal to 5.986. And that will equal x minus 39. And then I will finish this off by adding 39 to both sides. So it is about 44.986. That is the data value we're dealing with with x. So it's roughly 45 if we were to round that to the nearest whole number. So that on the standard bell curve. So again, there's my bell curve. Middle of the bell curve, that's my mean. And we're actually dealing with, with a z-score of 0.73, positive 0.73 z-score, so it won't be a full one standard deviation away, so this is plus one. 
It's going to be before that, so the value I'm dealing with is probably right about there. That would be a z-score of 0.73. We can do a z-score calculator. There are numerous z-score calculators on the web. Uh, the one I would suggest that you use um, is just to simply Google z-score calculator, and the first option is probably going to be at calculator.net. Um, I'm going to have this linked on your Google Classroom, the particular calculator that would, you would prefer to use. Um, when you go to college, you'll have to do this on a graphing calculator, but we will do this using a calculator on the World Wide Web. The number of videos uploaded daily to a video sharing site is normally distributed with a mean of 181,099 videos and a a uh, standard deviation of 35,644 videos. Find each probability, then use a graphing calculator to sketch the corresponding area under the curve. So we're dealing, we know what the mean is, we know the standard deviation, and then part A is that we are going to find the probability that a randomly selected video is between the 180,000 and 200,000 uploads uh, on any given day. So we're gonna do that using the Z-score calculator. So here's the Z-score calculator. And we're gonna find the probability between 180,000 and 200,000 with the given information about the mean and the standard deviation. We first have to convert 180,000 and 200,000 to Z-score. So we could do that using the Z-score formula, um, or we could just use the Z-score calculator and that's what we're gonna do. So we're going to start with 880,000. We have to convert that to a Z-score. So the raw score is 180,000. Type that in. The population mean was 181,099. And the standard deviation is 35,644. We'll calculate that. And you can see that is a z-score of negative, this is for 180,000, that is a z-score of negative 0 0.03083. Now we're going to convert the 200,000. So I'll go back, I'll hit the back button to go back to that, and I'll convert that raw score and I'll change that to 200,000, and I'll convert that to a z-score. So I'll calculate that, and that z-score is about 0 0.5327. 0 0.5327. All right, now we're going to go to the probability between two z-scores. So we'll type in the left bound. The left bound is the smaller of the two z-scores. That is that negative 0 0.03083, and then the right bound is the larger of the two z-scores, and that's that 0 0.53027, and then I'll calculate that, and you can see that there on the right page, right-hand side where it says result, it says that the P, which stands for the z-score, the probability, I mean, the probability of that z-score, is going to be about 0 0.03. 21434, which we could convert to 21.4%, about 0.434%, if we so choose. And then we need to draw that on our bell curve. So what we're looking at, the probabilities between two z-scores is going to be this part right there. Right there where that arrow is pointing at that show that it's the probability that the z-score is between those two z-scores we computed. And so it is actually a very tiny sliver. So if I draw my bell curve right here, we know that negative 0.3 is gonna be slightly to the left of the mean. So let me highlight the mean again. So here's the mean. So the score that we're dealing with is slightly to the left of that. So it'd be about like right here. And then 0.53, that would be about halfway over to 
the next standard deviation. So the area we're dealing with is right in this area right in there. You can see it's a little bit of a better example, again, at the thing that I'm pointing at right there um, to show exactly how small that little sliver is of 21%. Part B is we got to find the probability that the score is greater than 250,000. So let me go back up here and convert that 250,000 to a z-score. So I'll calculate that. And that z-score is about 1.9303. So I want to find the probability that we're dealing with a z-score that is greater than the z-score of 1.93303. So I'll go down to this probability converter. And this is the second one right there. So that will be, I'm going to type in 1.9. 3303. Hit go. And you can see the result is a lot of different results. And again, I'm looking at in that big area right over here, this giant area right here. And it gives you a lot of results, but the one we're gonna be looking at is a score greater than the Z-score that we typed in, and it's that one right there. That's the one I'm looking at and it is a very tiny sliver, it is 0 0.026616. So if I move the decimal two places to the right, that would be approximately 2.6% for a probability as percent, or you can write it as a decimal. And then to change that and draw that out. So again, down the middle is the mean, one standard deviation would be about right there. Two standard deviations would be down here. So the score that I'm dealing with would be 1.93. That's going to be roughly there. And then everything to the right of that.